I was arrested sometime by Ukrainian, Russian police. They cut my hair, take me along. I don't care. I, I love Beatles. It was illegal. If something illegal, people must it more and more. It means peace of freedom. And I suppose they changed the world and they destroyed the communism. It must. More than, more than Gorbachev, by the way. They, they changed the uh, Soviet Union. When my mother and father listened at the first time Beatles music, they don't like it. Because I, I hear it in maximum volume, and it was, it was very strange for them. They were born in, before revolution, the product of Russia, the product of communism. For Beatles superfan Kolya Vasin in St. Petersburg, this is a big day, John Lennon's birthday. For more than 30 years now, Kolya and his friends have staged musical celebrations for each of the Beatles' birthdays. For us, that's uh, like native music, native. That's our music. John Lennon is a Russian man for us. Свободы. Они боялись свободы. Iron Curtain was uh, after Beatles like like забор с дырками стал. Вот вот в чем фокус. И мы дышали этим воздухом через этот uh, через этот забор. Джордж Харрисон как-то сказал очень хорошо, что мы дали людям надежду и мы дали людям шанс повеселиться. Мы дали людям шанс забыть, что такое скука. Скука и всякая ерунда по жизни. Тупость всякая, всяческая. Политическая, там, культурная тупость. Э, духовная тупость. Битлз отвлекли нас всех от этого. Everywhere I went, people told me myths about the Beatles. Some of the real information, kids spun stories about the Fab Four. They swapped fables, which became smudged and fantastic, like the photographs they copied and copied until they were as mysterious and revered as the Turin Shroud. Louder, you know. In Minsk, Yuri Pelushinok remembers sharing Beatles stories in the schoolyard with his friend Yakov. Everybody who is bringing the like, rumor in class, everybody listening to him, and he's enjoying the attention. Do you know that the uh, English Queen gave uh, John Lennon a gold car? It's a pure gold. No, it's not. It couldn't be pure gold because it would be too heavy for John Lennon to escape from his fans. No, it's not. No, it was a silver. No gold. No silver. <laughs> but the most persistent myth is the story of the secret concert. In towns and cities across the Soviet Union, millions of fans, convinced by the song back in the USSR, believed the Beatles' plane touched down near them to refuel on the way to Japan. Back in USSR. Then the legend tells how the Fab Four emerged from the plane to play an impromptu concert on the wing. It was religion, you know, some, some bright light in, in a dreary life. It was quiet revolution in our brains. It's something secret. You, you have it in your heart. All you need is love. For his John Lennon birthday party in St. Petersburg, Kolya Vasin has assembled a dozen tribute bands to play once again the music which seduced a generation. You promise not to tell. Almost 50 years after the Beatles virus first infected the Soviet Union, it lives on in the thousands of bands who still keep the faith and play the old songs.
being with that audience in St. Petersburg, it was obvious that the Beatles' songs still connect with kids as well as with their grandparents. But I kept remembering how tough it was for earlier generations to make this music their own. In Minsk, Yuri Pelyushinok decided the only way he could follow the Beatles was to build his own guitar. If you're lucky, you know, have actual photograph of the Beatles guitar, yeah, Beatles guitar, and then you draw it on a, on, a, on a table or something. I saw the table myself, my grandma table. We built all guitars at home or sometimes in, even in a school shop. We just pretended to build something else. The biggest challenge was to make a pickup to get that rock and roll sound. I think it was a young technician magazine. Someone shared the idea. So how to build uh, pick up out of telephone receiver. So the next day, receiver is gone, all around the country. It was just like that, no, gone. Then there was the problem of finding a speaker. Propaganda should, should sound loud. <laughs> if a militiaman or a policeman is not watching you, yeah, you know, you just climb. <laughs> and you have a decent speaker. Equipped with his homemade guitar, Yuri was ready to follow the Beatles to rock and roll heaven. You just hear it and you want to do it. You want to be part of it. You want to be like them. You have never seen them, but you want to be. You join together with your band, you play, and you are happy. In Minsk, Yuri Pelushinok brings his band together for the first time in 30 years. Yuri wrote a song to recall those days when Soviet kids were hungry to make rock and roll. something in your heart, you don't let anybody to touch it, you know? It's yours. It's official life is going on, it's an official way, and you have an unofficial life. It's a huge separation, it's a huge gap. By the early 70s, Soviet authorities began to waver. It was time to make some cautious compromise with the Beatles' generation, or at least make some money. State factories churned out guitars. The state recording monolith Melodia released a few Beatles tracks, identified at first as folk songs, played by an anonymous vocal instrumental group. Copyright fees were ignored. The Communist Party went into the bootleg business. Not we won the victory, they lost. And they say, at least we will squeeze some money out of it make a virtue of necessity, you know, just... <laughs> couldn't win, you, you make money. 